So this week's video is going to be a little bit different. Delilah obviously hasn't always worn a muzzle and now she is. We have our own specific reasoning for that and we thought we'd walk you through our thought process as well as the idea of a muzzle as a training mechanism for your dog if you're interested in something like this. Obviously we're not experts, we just know what we've gone through with Delilah and the results that we've seen since implementing it in her daily lifestyle. We're going away, get your back, check the tag, decision is made, lock your door, need no more, it's a journey for life and I'm going right, hang on, I cannot go wrong. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell for notifications. We love adding members to the Travel Dogs family, and we love traveling with our dogs. Come join us for the ride. Let's get this video started. All right, so before we jump into the video, I want to give a disclaimer. I know a lot of you are here for different reasons. Um, maybe you follow the channel and you're just checking this video out just like any of the others. That's awesome. Maybe you are considering muzzle training yourself and you're just looking to get some insights from another uh, family that's had to deal with muzzle training. Or perhaps you are a hater of muzzle training and muzzles in general and you came here to be judgmental or to, uh, you know, kind of harshly criticize the situation. Um, if you're here and you're just supporting the channel and you like our videos, awesome. Thank you so much for your support. You have no idea how much it means to us that you are a part of the Travel Dogs family. If you are a family dealing with issues at home and considering muzzle training, as Adam said, we are not experts. So I definitely think it could be helpful to watch this video, but I definitely urge you to seek dog training and talk to your veterinarian, talk to experts in different areas of dog behavior to kind of decide what plan is right for you and your dog. That being said, if you are here to, uh, you know, pass judgment upon us, you know, do what you got to do. But I will say this, Adam and I never considered muzzle training before we adopted a dog like Delilah. She has presented us with more difficulties and issues than we ever have come across with dogs in all of our lives. And we've grown up in very dog-centric families. We've always had dogs. We definitely still have so much that we can learn about dogs in general. There's just so many different factors that come into play when making a decision like this. And I really urge you to come into watching this video with an open mind and try to um, understand that maybe another owner's experience is not yours. We don't really view the muzzle as just the muzzle alone. It is muzzle training. It is something that coincides with other things that you are doing to help your dog uh, become more sociable, become more comfortable, become a safer part of society. If your dog is having issues, you need to get a trainer. You need to seek other avenues of uh, taking care of your dog's issues. You know, it's not always in everyone's monetary budget to get a trainer. So, you know, there there are a lot of, you know, books and online reading and things that you can do if you're really serious about getting your dog well. There are affordable options out there. If you have experienced something like that, leave in a comment below to help somebody else out in this situation. Everyone here loves dogs. I think that goes without saying or it should go without saying in this group. So you know, let's try to be supportive and really help each other out. We want to involve you guys more. We want you guys to be a part of the Travel Dogs family and get more involved, help each other out, help us out, give us tips. We are more than happy and excited about those sorts of things. And we want to build a legitimate community here on this channel of just support for dog lovers. Let's jump into the video and talk about what led us to make the decision to start muzzle training Delilah. We adopted Delilah June of what year was it? 2017. June of 2017. We had, oh, Delilah's getting a drink now. It's probably really loud. <laughs> Longest dog drink. We'll see you guys time. as soon as Delilah's done getting a drink. She never decides to drink. And then She's we're like, rolling. Oh, done? 
big girl, Lila. So we adopted Delilah June of 2017. She was found in a box with her litter of puppies. They were severely malnourished, uh, severely parasite ridden, covered in fleas, had huge bellies due to tapeworms. When we picked her up to adopt her, we like without question, we were like, she's full of tapeworms. Like, and we are not like medical dog experts, but her belly was so big, more than just like the regular puppy belly. Um, so, and she was like really skinny too. So yeah, having... I mean, she's got her little adoption photo where she straight up looks extremely emaciated with big old pot belly sitting there. Her tail is tucked between her legs. She did not get off to the best start in life. But I kind of just fell in love with her. We always kind of have this joke that we planned on adopting Baloo because we, when we first moved in together, we knew that we wanted a dog. So we always say that Baloo is planned and Delilah was an accident. She was, she was the last of her litter to get adopted and she was cuddling her last sister, yin and yang style. And as they pulled her sister away, cause she was already adopted, you, Delilah was just like the most pathetic looking little runt of a worm that you'd ever seen. <laughs> and I just look at Krista and then look at Delilah and I'm just like in my own head, crap. There's no way we're walking out of here without this dog yeah. right now. Krista just, we need to talk. He's definitely like usually the more level headed person in those situations. And he was like, why are we getting a second dog? What's going on? Um, Cause it was like, I think three months after we adopted Baloo, it wasn't very long. We thought we were gonna wait a little bit longer before getting a second dog, but things happen. Delilah happened. <clears throat> She's actually being like super cute right now. She's like, Come She's like I hear my name. Go baby, go baby, go baby. What are you doing? She's being a little ham right now, a little sausage. You went just napping. Did you hear your name? I think she keeps hearing us say her name and she's like, what, what do you want? I'm the star of this show. Yeah, you guys get off You guys that. can't see it, but she's like got a wiggle butt going below the camera right now. As soon as we picked her up, we knew she was timid. It's not always a case of abuse or neglect. Some dogs just genuinely have issues and we have had our fair share of mistakes in this journey of learning how to navigate life with a dog like Delilah. She was extremely timid from day one and everything we were reading online was exposure, exposure, exposure. Get her outside, get her used to things, get her used to dogs, get her used to people. So that's what we did. And while that's not necessarily a bad thing, it needs to be controlled exposure. You want to be in control of creating positive experiences when you go out with your dog. And sometimes those exposures aren't really as beneficial to her as you might think. You would think that exposure, exposure, exposure means getting her out and getting as much contact with other people and dogs as possible because you know that those people and dogs aren't going to hurt her, but she doesn't know that. And so no matter if it is a positive experience or not, if she is not happy about the situation that it has already been locked in as a negative experience, just like people are introverted and extroverted, dogs are too. And if your dog doesn't want somebody to touch them, then that's okay. They're allowed to have that sense of space. I mean, I don't want people touching me when I go out in public all the time. <laughs> There's a time and a place for everything. I think what we're trying to say is that they have their own unique personalities. They have their own preferences. They have their own ways of dealing with things. And people tend to think that if a dog isn't just in your face loving and just the sweetest thing ever, then it's like a failed story for them or that they somehow are being mistreated. And at the end of the day, she's a unique individual and she has unique individual issues that we are trying to work towards a better life, more comfortable, confident, happy life for her. Building off what she was saying about the muzzle not being your main form, of it's an aspect of your training regimen. So you don't want that muzzle being the only reason that your dog is safe around other people. You wanna make sure that that dog, every time it goes out in public, is confident and happy and believes in you to make the right decisions. Another aspect that we've implemented in her daily recovery is putting her on Prozac. After a consultation with her veterinarian, they recommended to us that it could help extend her fuse. And I think that it's really, benefited her in a lot of different ways. It really has. And, um, you know, it's not a fail safe. See, this is the thing, like outside of the training specifically, all of these things are just 
factors that help her training and her other things along. There are these support systems. The muzzling and the Prozac are really support along with her training implementation and a new lifestyle change to really get her to a better place. It's not about one aspect, it's about all of them together and how they work together to create a better life for Delilah. That's why it's important to consult multiple professionals in different areas of dog specialty. There's veterinarians, there's behaviorists, and there's trainers. Um, it's important to get information and consults from all types of expertise in order to create a fuller picture of your dog and what would best suit them. Um, so the Prozac has definitely been a huge aspect of helping her in this process. And once again, it's just another example of we really are trying everything we can. It's not like we just woke up one morning and we were like, we don't want to deal with this. Let's just put a muzzle on her. That is a common misconception with most people that muzzle train their dogs. And the muzzle is only one aspect of that. It is just the most visually, visually prominent aspect of that that unfortunately has a negative stigma around it. I think it's time to end that stigma. It's just something, a tool, to help with a specific task. And that's what the muzzle is to Delilah. And that's how I think we need to start thinking about it. Dogs have mental health issues as well. Delilah being one of them, she has anxiety. And you know, that being said too, a lot of people use muzzles for a lot of issues. It's not just uh, fear reactivity and aggression. If your dog if just eats everything there when it goes outside. There are people that have training and do various things for their dogs to try and uh, curb them from eating uh, unsafe, unsafe items when they're out on walks and stuff. And they have muzzles for that. I mean, there are multiple uses for muzzles. So don't always jump to a conclusion. Don't be judgmental and try to have a positive outlook. And if you're not sure, sometimes just ask and really be friendly. People generally are more than willing to talk about it and share their experience. We recognize that Delilah has certain ingrained issues that we can work on and work towards a better place for her. But when we adopted Baloo, he was very timid and shy. And it only took him about a month to come out of his shell and the exposure did work for him. That was a huge thing for him. He was terrified of all dogs and we started taking him to the dog park and then he became the most social social butterfly at the dog park. He loved running around playing with other dogs, saying hi to people. That had a negative impact on us uh, in a way of being a little overly optimistic about Delilah's issues that the same things that worked for Baloo could really work for her. And, uh, you know, unfortunately we just, we're learning, you know, and we, we're still learning. If I could say anything, if I could give anyone advice, if you adopt a dog or a young dog specifically, getting them training, if you're able to as early on as possible, just build so much foundation for the road ahead. And so many lines of communication have been opened since we started Delilah's training that weren't there before. From our own experience, we tried several different training methods. I, I read a dog behavioral book and we implemented different things here or there. We tried treat training, we tried this kind of training, that kind of training. And every time we started and stopped the training, that reiterated to Delilah that we were weak leaders. We weren't providing the security that she needed to feel comfortable in her environment. And that's really important for a dog like Delilah, who has had no security for her entire life before us. So from the start, Delilah, you know, was very timid and anxious. We've addressed that. She was always very anxious about men and children, more so than women for whatever reason. Early on, Delilah was around my niece a lot. But that being said, she grew up around dogs. She's not some crazy rambunctious kid. She's the ideal kid that you would want your dog to be meeting if it's their first time meeting a kid. Yes, and Delilah was always terrified of her. Over time, we thought, you know, she'll get more used to her and get more comfortable. She was around our niece a lot and it only got worse. And no matter the positive exposure that she had with our niece, it was not helping. So that became a large concern for Adam and I because we want to have kids. And so we were like, we, how do we approach this though? Like, how do you have a dog that's acting super timid and scared around children? and try to expose them for, to children and not, you know, obviously not wanting to endanger the child. And even though Delilah hadn't shown any, you know, reactive tendencies at that point in time, it was still always on our radar that we needed to be aware of it because anytime a dog is scared or uncomfortable, 
you have to accept that that could always be a possibility at a certain point. Over time, Delilah, you know, shifted from being really shy and timid around my niece to starting, sh starting to show reactive and aggressive tendencies towards her. This really led us to want to get training. The training was our top priority at that moment in time. We did consultations with this trainer and that trainer, and we were really just testing the waters and seeing which one would be suited best for us and her specific issues. Because that's the thing, is you want a trainer that is suited to your dog's specific needs. Ultimately, this process was negated when Delilah tore her first CCL, and that really put it on the back burner for us. We went to her vet appointment, found out that we were gonna be doing the TPL of surgery, um, and basically found out that the recovery process was gonna be intensive. It was gonna take a minimum of 10 weeks, and that she was gonna be under strict, strict precautions, only in a kennel or on leash, not allowed to run, not allowed to do anything. That being said, a lot of training programs are exercise-based. If you have a dog that is in this intensive recovery, you can't do those things properly. So that being said, we talked to our vet and she recommended that we get the surgery and then do the training. And so that's what we did. So we did the recovery. We definitely noticed a lot of regression after that recovery. While it was helping her leg heal, it was doing, it was having the opposite effect on her mentally. Before leaving Colorado, we did a little dog photo shoot with our friend Bethany. Shout out to Bethany, she's an amazing photographer. We'll put a link for her down in the description. But basically she barked and lunged at Bethany and she's known Bethany for a long time and we were very- And has been friendly with her in the past. Mm -hmm. And so we were, but she hadn't seen her in months. One of our first stops was Houston. We decided we're gonna stay here longer so that we can find a trainer. It was a lot of hard work, it was a lot of physical work um, and a lot of new rules, but we did see a positive shift in Delilah with this training. And she was happier. She, yes, overall happier and she listened better. I mean, we were able to take her and Bullet out on leash and they were on point, but we were starting to see the positive effects. This is a weird example, but there was a day that we were installing a light and I was tinkering with it and it had, you know, a couple metal pieces that were like clanking and stuff like that. Basically a typical thing that Delilah would be terrified of. And she actually came up and sniffed it and wagged her tail when it was a positive experience. Like I basically was like, okay, and let her sniff it. And she started wagging her tail and then she went and laid down. And that was like, sounds silly, but I was just like, oh. My gosh, Delilah <laughs> smelled an object that was making noise. That she noise hadn't seen before. That was making noise. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. So the, there were little, yeah, there was these little milestones of things that we really felt like, wow, this is really having an impact on her. All right, so this is Delilah right now. I don't know if you can tell, but her leg is shaking. They're doing a some construction or something really noisy on the other side of the fence and it scared the crap out of her. We were pretty close to being ready to leave and we cannot leave when she is upset. So we need to work through this with her. So we are gonna keep working her until she is a little less afraid. Delilah, good check, honey. That was a good check. Tail is relaxed, not wagging, no shaking. She powered through today. I'm really proud of her. It was a rough day, um, but she overcame a lot of stuff. So I think, I think we got a good girl, huh? But you are not centered at all. So that's a thing. We'll work on it. She was still afraid out in public of people, but we had her very well leash trained to the point where we had, we felt we had very good control over her. And we do feel like we were seeing the beginning stages of that coming together and really working for her. That being said, her second CCL tour. She was really working well. well. She was performing. She was going out in public and her confidence training was really taking effect in her. It was giving her this extra level of comfort with us that she wasn't having to assume that role as the alpha. We knew that it was going to put a damper on her training because of, like I said, a lot of her training was exercise based. We did try to be positive. You know, we looked at it like, okay, we've done this before. 
we'll do it again and then cue COVID. So why that plays a role? We didn't want to stay on the road when COVID initially happened. We didn't know what was going to be happening. So we decided to go home. We were already going to go back to Colorado for the surgery. We'll just stay there until she's healed. We can't go anywhere. She can't go anywhere. She can't get these exposures. She is isolated. So it was very detrimental to her. And with Delilah and Blue's rules, it became a little difficult and challenging to have rules that were implemented to them that were not implemented to my parents' dogs while we were there 24 seven. Dogs don't understand the difference between themselves and those dogs over there. And so when they're not allowed on the furniture, but these two dogs are, it's very confusing to them. Our first outing after leaving my parents, she attempted to lunge at somebody. Granted, while we were already wanting to start muzzle training her and we had already started to muzzle train her, she was we were still doing it in short increments. So she wasn't in the muzzle 24 seven. So you can see in that video, she was in the muzzle earlier on in the day, but it got hot. We took it off because it's not a full pant basket muzzle, which is important. And we were sitting up on a secluded peak or so we thought and a man walked up from behind us. None of us saw him and we were very fortunate that nothing happened. The gentleman was very nice about it. We don't want to get lucky. We want to have a process and a plan where those things don't happen. And um, we are happy and fortunate enough that we stuck with her muzzle training and she's very comfortable in it now. She can wear it for long durations. We got her a new muzzle now that has a full pant room in it which is very important so that she can go on hikes and she can go on these longer excursions where she can breathe that was a new experience and it was very off-putting to us luckily prior to leaving my parents house while we were seeing her regression during her tp her second tplo surgery recovery we felt like having a muzzle whilst training her would give us more confidence to when we were taking her out in public and doing these trainings and having to expose her to people and children and dogs that we wanted to have the reassurance and the confidence that nothing was going to happen, that even if we were super on point, we understood that she's still an animal and that we don't want anything to happen while we're trying to get her back on track. You can't account for everything in any given situation. Just like in the UFO Watchtower video, she got uncomfortable in one split second and then reacted. It, she didn't even necessarily know what she was doing, but she was just reacting instinctually. And those are the kinds of things that the muzzle really helps to curb. It gives us that comfortability and it gives her a tremendous amount of comfortability. It had this side effect on her that she was a little less reactive in general, which was great. We want to continue her other training. That training along with the muzzle training has had a positive impact on Delilah. A lot of times when we were out and before her second surgery, I would always get really nervous. Like what if something goes wrong? We have a lot of people that specifically with Delilah, because they love her black mask, I think is mostly the comment we get about her. Unfortunately, that has manifested in a lot of people running up to her and not asking if they can pet her. You know, we tried getting her a vest that said, do not pet, and people still come up to her, grab her face. People don't read the vest. People don't ask. Um, sometimes people ask as they're grabbing her face. We didn't really see great results from the vest. I think by and large, once the muzzle was put on her, people generally tend to take that seriously. Or ask. Or ask, yes. Mm -hmm. And actually, a lot of people want to pet Delilah. I'm like, if she does not want to do it, then I am not going to make her do it. She has the muzzle just in case. It is there as a fail safe for the instances in which we have experienced where even when we're doing her training, even when she has her do not pet vest on, even when she is 100% on point, we do get people that run up to her, don't ask, try to pet her, try to grab her face, try to do things that to her look and appear super threatening. At the end of the day, her wearing a muzzle gives her more confidence. Her wearing a muzzle gives us more confidence. There was a point where I 
thought that maybe muzzle training or muzzling was cruel for your dogs. But after experiencing this with Delilah firsthand, I can tell you it's not bad unless you make it bad. Delilah gets excited when she sees the muzzle. It means she's going outside to do something fun. She loves it. She wears it proudly, getting rid of this misnomer that because she's in a muzzle, she's somehow second rate or less important is just not true. She is by far one of the most important aspects of our life. Both of these dogs are, and we would do anything like this for both of them. I would like you to try to understand that it, for a dog like Delilah, a muzzle is an avenue for more life experience, for more happiness, for more fun. The outdoor excursions that she has got to go on since being in the RV, she loves it and we don't want her to have to give that up. We don't want her to not be able to experience life. We don't want her to just sit in the RV and be sad and lonely while we go out with blue everywhere. And granted, there are gonna be some excursions that are not as suited for her. And we address that in the next video. Um, that, you know, sometimes we will just take Baloo if it's something that we genuinely don't think is well suited or fit for Delilah. Um, and that's okay. That doesn't mean that we don't want her there or that she's second rate. It just means that we're doing our job as parents to decide whether or not an excursion or an activity is good for either of them. There's a lot we could talk about with muscle training. There's a lot more we could talk about with Delilah. You know, we could talk about how we actually muzzle trained her and got her comfortable in the muzzle. If you want a video like that, we will do it. So let us know if you're interested in something like that. We can give you more uh, information about the actual muzzle training itself, how we got her comfortable, how we picked the right muzzle for her. Um, those are all very important things to consider when muzzle training your dog. It is not as simple as just going online, picking the first muzzle you see, and just kind of going for it, just putting it on the dog's face. That is not how it works. It is very methodic process, and it takes time to get them comfortable in a muzzle, and it takes time to find the right muzzle for them. We're really happy that you guys watched this video. If you watched it all the way to the end, thank you so much. Please hit that like button, and please hit the subscribe button turn on notifications if you'd like to see more videos and please comment down below uh, with your thoughts with your opinions and if you know somebody that you think this video could help um, be sure to share it with them all right guys thanks for watching with us today we'll see you next week thanks for traveling with us